Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Common Metrics uh, Working Group meeting uh, for April 27th, 2023. Uh, as a reminder, we do we do follow the uh, the Chaos Code of Conduct in these meetings. Uh, and uh, with that, I will just uh, we'll just go ahead and jump into the agenda. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, the first thing on the agenda is a new metric to consider. Uh, diff delta. Which I'm not, I don't know anything about this. Uh, do we know who added this? I'm guessing Matt, so we could maybe skip ahead until he's able to join because I don't know anything about it either. I saw that okay. it was on there, but I think he added that. Okay, so I see the uh, the event locations metric is the next thing on the gen the agenda. I put that on there just to make sure um, that we figured out. Did we figure out what we're doing with that, Kevin? Remind me. Uh, I think we should we should probably talk about it because I I didn't realize that Common owned that metric. I was uh I was assuming that DEI owned the uh, the event locations metric. Uh, I guess yeah, I just same. forgot. Uh, yeah, I didn't I didn't remember either until I was doing helping Matt with that metrics audit, and I was like, oh, what's this? There's already an event locations metric. So yeah. I, I can give a, a brief overview of this issue, I suppose. Uh, so we, uh, in DEI, we have a we have a, a metric called event location inclusivity, uh, and we have a metric called event location accessibility. Uh, and then we were we were looking to add an event location equity. Uh, so the the initial initial conversation on that was either adding uh, equity to the the inclusivity metric that already existed uh, or merging it into the event locations metric uh, so after after some discussion in the uh, the DEI working group I think we decided to merge it into the event locations metric uh, but once again the assumption was that that uh, DEI actually owned that metric uh, but common is the one that uh, uh, that defined it. Uh, so this is a metric that I am working on. Uh, I don't know if we want to discuss the actual merger or if you all would prefer to wait and see what the metric looks like. Are there any thoughts I'm, on that? I'm good to wait and see what changes you end up with at the end of the day. So you're just going to take that event locations metric that's already been released then and just add those changes into that one is that so you you had provided some edits to the inclusivity metric to add equity i basically ah. took those edits uh removed them from inclusivity and added them to uh the event locations metric and then i'm going to go through and I'll, I'll edit it further so basically what it what it'll end up being is uh, so right now, event locations is really just a, it's just a, it's almost a list of where uh, event locations happen. Uh, so when we when we add equity to it, however, it also becomes a uh, question of where are those metrics happening and are they being dispersed in kind of an equitable way. All right. So. Uh, are all of the are all of these conferences just happening in California? Is that where the community members for that project exist? Uh, do the does the project ever or does the event ever occur uh, in other areas? Things things of that nature, right? So just uh, just kind of equity in the way that events are uh, dispersed around the globe, uh, and and whether or not the uh, that disbursement kind of matches uh, where the community is. So I, I think they fit together fairly well, uh, and would uh, it would address the the DEI concern of equity, but it would also address the uh, the location part, which would still be a a main component of it. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. Um, I had so if you so we want to leave it in common then, or does it matter? I don't I don't think it matters. I think common can I think per our uh, 
you know, guidelines or, or rules, we can we can work on whatever metrics we want to work on, and and this this could be considered a common a common okay. metric. I think that sounds good. Um, just so just so you know, I took that event locations metric out of the spreadsheet completely on DEI just to avoid uh, confusion. So. Um, if you want to change the spreadsheet to go back to in progress or however you want to track that you're working on that. And the, um, the DEI one is the one that was not published. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then, yeah, I think, I think it's appropriate to just remove it. Okay. Uh, because the, the one that we're concerned with is the common one. And uh, when we, when we, and since that's already been published, it'll have to go back through review or whatever, whatever that looks like currently. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, does anyone else have any comments on that particular issue or shall I move on? Oh, I did have one more question about that. Um, so are we going to change the name from just event locations to event location equity or what do you think? I think it's, I think it'll require a name change. Okay. I was kind of leaning towards actually uh, event locations, uh, event location and equity with an and separating the location and equity uh but event location equity could work as well uh, i think we could we could talk about that as part of the, the edit okay uh so the metrics audit progress that's going to be matt as well yes uh, do we know do we know what time he was coming in um, I think he just had something right at the beginning of this meeting. Um, so as soon as he uh, took care of that, then he would be able to join. So hopefully it's not too long. And if need be, I can talk a little bit about that because he and I have been working together on that. But I, mm -hmm. I think he he would be probably better to discuss it if he's here. So we can give him a minute. Okay. And then the, uh, the last agenda item is getting metrics from our software into our metrics definitions. It was that a Matt? Nope, that was me. Okay. Um, so it's something we've talked about a few times in this um, in this meeting because we have loads, you know, so we have what, 100 metrics that are defined on the website and our our tooling definitely has has more than those, those metrics, um, but we haven't actually just taken the time to define all of those. And I got to thinking about it because Paturgia does this metric of the month thing and this was actually two metrics and they're really explicit in these these blog posts about exactly how it's defined and i'm thinking maybe we should create some some issues and just just start defining some of these some of these metrics um in particular these two because i think these are probably pretty easy we just need to verify that we don't have them defined somewhere under some other name that i didn't didn't jump out at me um but Looking at those metrics, and maybe maybe on the Sean, this is a question for you. I'm not sure whether these are um, they're kind of risk metrics. Um, we could define them either place. I think we just have to pick one. Yeah, I I mean I actually looked at those metrics, and they're not what the risk working group has been talking about. Okay. Um, they are more aligned with what the um, the uh, Evolution working group historically talked about. Okay. Um, so we could define. Them I also, here. yeah. Well, and I also remember efficiency coming up in, in um, the metric model working group. And what I don't, what I haven't taken the time myself to look at is whether, for example, efficiency is um, is meaning the same thing. And when you talk about review efficiency, like I do know that we talk about pull request acceptance rate which I think is the same concept as review efficiency index. And so the question is, are there parameters or filters? I forget what we call them now um, in, in that uh, pull, pull or that merge request rate. So there's some kind of merge request metric that does ad address this, but I don't think is explicitly. I think some of the concept of review efficiency is probably buried in the metric as a parameter of some kind. So, but yeah, I, I agree conceptually that we should incorporate these metrics into the chaos metric repertoire. Um, you know, the one, one thing is the, like, 
the way that this is framed, these are framed as risk metrics isn't really consistent with what chaos calls risk metric. So that's, you know, but that's just a label. That's fine. I, I mean, that's, that's getting that's the metrics that. in there. It's still a good idea. Yeah, I would say they're models. And apparently they're, they're models that use these seven metrics. The, the two metrics in the um, post, um, I think, well, I would have to go look. I know so, that the word efficiency has come up from Asia Pacific. Yeah. And I don't, and I, so I think some of this is there. I think some of this is probably buried in parameters for merge well, I think request if you, metrics that we have. You, so, sorry, if you scroll down a little bit, like in the backlog management issue to what's showing at the very bottom of the page. It's just defined as closed issues defined defined by submitted issues. Oh, the, the so BMI BMI is closed issues divided by submit submitted issues. So that's two metrics. Yeah. That's good to know. I can address my BMI with uh, pull requests and issues. Okay. Yeah. Never never mind. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I saw the uh, I saw the list of seven metrics here. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was that was something else. And um, I assumed that they were making yeah, these. So, I mean, so, so there's there's so there's four yeah. metrics that would be. Uh, so these two uh, are these like uh, we have a atomic metric and we have a model. So here they are using two metric. Is this a model or is it a metric? I think it's a I, I, I think well, it's a metric, and I think it's. Um, I mean, I think closed reviews di divided by submitted reviews. I don't necessarily. I don't. I don't think we need to define those as two separate metrics, and then define this as something that goes with those. I mean, it's sort of like, like when I um, defined the change request ratio. It was. It's basically, you know, the number of. You know, it's a ratio of, of two things. And I, I see this as just like, I mean, closed reviews and submitted reviews. That's, it's not necessarily a metric. It's just a, like a data point. Right. I, uh, I agree. I, I, I take back what I said before. I, I okay. misunderstood. Uh, uh, when I saw those seven metrics, I, I assumed that those seven metrics were part of those and not uh, okay. a, a different thing. So, yeah, so I, I agree. These are, these are metrics. So. Yeah, so specifically what I'm talking about is is defining a BMI metric and then defining yeah. a review efficiency. What was it? REI. Yeah, review efficiency index as two, two metrics. So I can create issues for those. I just wanted to double check and make sure that, um, that these belonged in common. Um, and I don't know if anybody's, if somebody's interested in picking them up, if they find these interesting and want to go ahead and define them. I would say go for it. I can start one of them. I mean, it looks like a lot of the text here is going to help with the description and objective anyway. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to create the issue for it then, or do you want me to do it? Um, well, if you're if you're going to create the issues, that'd be cool. And then you can just assign me one of them. Yeah. Assign me a other one. Welcome, Matt. Hi. So we, we went ahead and got started without you. Yeah, I, I, uh, but we skipped I, I, over the uh, we skipped no. over the items you uh, you had added. Okay, and I'm guessing this was. Done. Okay, sorry, sorry, Sean. I or sorry, uh, Matt. I lost I lost internet connection for a second, so oh. I, I I didn't actually hear whether you wanted yeah. me to to create it or not. <laughs> yes, create the issue. Assign yeah. one to the nod and sign one to me. Okay, perfect. Yeah. It sounds it sounds like there might be a Zoom problem because I lost internet briefly earlier as well. No. And we are not in the same area, Don. <laughs> Don just lost it again. Oh, Don. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the other the other thing we had talked about was the event locations metric, uh, turning that into the event uh, locations yep. equity metric. Yep. So Common owns that metric. So. Uh, we can we can present it to DEI as well, but I will. Yep. Uh, I'm working on that metric, and I will present it to Common in the next okay. meeting. 
Yeah. So I guess that's kind of tied in with your question, Don, too. Like, should those two metrics that we were just talking about be in common? Let's just go ahead and start them there. And we can move them to a different working group if we need to. And like related to that, there's the event location metric that's currently sitting in common. And DEI has been talking about, um, what, what is it, Kevin? Event location equity? Yeah. Is that what it is? So we're like, that may be a metric that ends up being evolved just a little bit and then moved to DEI. And again, like the movement is really just for that spreadsheet <laughs> and where we might spend the time talking about it because the release metrics are all, those, the working groups are, are lost on the web page in a good way. Okay, uh, so we skipped over a new metric to consider diff delta. Okay. Uh, we assumed that you added that, if you'd like to talk about that one. Um, I think somebody else added it, uh, an individual who I'd have to go track down in Slack, um, but they just, they had an interest in bringing this back up and um, just encouraging a conversation. So they are not on the call here, but um, I just, I just wanted to bring this up to the group here. So, I mean, if you want me to track down who it was, I can do that. But, so, Matt, is it somebody, like, did they want to work on this or? Well, I, I think I, I, what I had done is I had suggested, like, they had talked about Diff Delta and I said, hey, here's the, the template. If you want to take a little bit of time and add it to the template and they did that. And that's what you're seeing here. So, I mean, I appreciate the effort and I thought maybe we could at least just give it a look here. Yeah, this is great. Do we want to take a moment and give it a read through and do some edits? Yeah, I mean, maybe I, I maybe I need to understand what it is first. Sean, I don't know. This seems to be more up your Which album. one we talk? Yeah, the diff, diff delta. The diff delta. Uh -huh. I mean, diff. I mean, Augur does diff delta. It's basically what are the lines added, lines removed, and the commits. I so think the name, the name here is a little bit misleading from the description because like what Sean is explaining, that's the right definition of diff delta from the commit at the commit level. But here they are mostly talking about the project level at the evolution of the project diff. Delta is a small change in terms of commit level. And the diff has also been used at that commit level where you have two twice you want to see the number of added lines there and deleted lines to calculate that delta at that space. But the description, yeah, I like the description in this template. It's just that the name is a little bit misleading. Yeah, that cognitive energy part that I think yeah, I don't know. How, yeah, that that's gonna have to go. I don't know how you get at cognitive energy. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think that first sentence seems pretty good in the description. That's what Sean you had described. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, the, yeah. It's, really so it's, it's just that piece of code, I guess. I mean, I I kind of think this exists in a conceptually similar way without some of the same descriptions in our. Um, lines of code metrics that were originally under evolution like i know we talked about these yep. kinds of line of code changes things very early on in the chaos project so yep we had it was around like um i've just been kind of taking a look at some of those metrics and we had mm -hmm. like they were like code change commits mm -hmm. like a lot around that there's, stuff code yeah, change yeah there's code change there's lines, code yeah, change, coach, lines. change lines is where this kind of thing would I think does exist, but yep. not with this level of elaboration. Okay. And certainly not with the same objectives. So it's the same metric, but it's explained. Um, it's probably, I would say this is a more contemporary explanation than what we came up with six or seven years ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's incorporating the ASPA motivation, which, you know, has emerged, obviously. And so I think, you know, revisiting some of those metrics and incorporating these concepts and rationales into them is um, 
a good idea okay be because this does i think update some you know what i would i characterize these things as core chaos metrics so like these are some of the core things that um people try to get at so sean do you think that taking a look at this this would be a unique metric different from the what the code change line one that we had talked about you know that there's already really no, because the, the the fundamental underlying data is the same and okay. i think what what this is is a more complete and contemporary elaboration than what we described you know so six or seven different. years ago so could could we treat this well, as I, a would, model? I would say well i would suggest i mean i would suggest just modifying the existing metric to incorporate these description and rationale gotcha. properties because the data is the same gotcha otherwise we end up with two metrics that are basically the same thing but rationalized differently and i think that would be confusing i see but i'm that's my opinion and i can i can be persuaded otherwise so there are uh there are two questions here so it's not just about lines of code it's also about the how the files and directories change. So yeah. because of that, we are adding kind of there. I think I think we we there they would be adding a little bit more in. Uh, so so I suppose I would ask the, the the same question I just asked is could could we just treat this as a model and connect it to the the lines of code uh, metric that we've already. I, I don't think we have a files changed metric. Uh, you know, we started one. Uh, like what uh, Sean said, if we look the way commits are done, every commit we can count the number of files that that particular commit is modifying, either deleting line or adding some code in, in that particular file or repository. Usually commit when analyzed at the lowest level of granularity, they capture just the line changes. But at the subsystem level, you now go to the file and the, the directories and things like that to see. Uh, so we can modify if necessary, we can now modify what we already have just to make sure we keep the track of it. Because to my opinion, if we have to define so many similar metrics then might be aggregating them at some point can be uh, tedious and giving us more much work whereas we can just go and modify what we already have to make it more representative that's my opinion though. so I, I think that's why i think that's why treating this as a as a model would be uh would be the easiest way out for us because the uh, the lines of code metric currently does not account for files changed, uh, and I do disagree with you a little on uh, uh, on how lines of code and, and files changed are uh, kind of the way that you kind of described them as similar. So I, I think they can tell us different things about the code base uh overly uh like the the complexity of the work that's being done is is about the the lines of code added deleted and also the number of places where those changes happen so the number of files so uh so i i i, I don't think the the number of files is trivial uh, but i also don't know that we need to necessarily define that as a metric uh, i think we could just talk about it in the as the the in a model actually in a in a diff delta delta model, and since since this one is also pretty heavily, yeah, I think this leans pretty heavily towards implementation. So, uh, in this I see this, three things like uh, one is uh, line change, file change, directory change. Do we have line change? Uh, I'm not sure. Like, is it? going to be a model because all three points to the similar thing uh, i'm not sure like, like adding files as a parameter for example would right so so it's a couple i mean do we do we like 
we have a very bare bones description of metric code changes lines. Um, it, it looks to me as though all of the data that underlies this metric is the same data that is in that existing metric. So I, uh, I think, I think perhaps this can be a modification to that metric because it's, it's fundamentally just looking at that singular piece of data and, and elaborating on it more fully, for example, the files parameter, like if you can get lines of code, you can get files. And I went, I went back and looked here real quick and I, I, we had change request files and change request commits as candidate metrics in evolution, but it doesn't look like they ever got finished. So this is not change requests, obviously, but conceptually it's the same thing. It's another way of getting at the same data ultimately, but we can deal with it at the commits level could instead I, of the change request level. Could I make a suggestion? Yep. Because I seem to have a variety of different thoughts on this one. Um, Kevin, could you, if you're seeing this as a model, maybe like in two weeks, I think, are we meeting in two weeks? I forget, but because of OSS. Two weeks is, uh, yeah, it was, I thought we decided we weren't meeting that week, but. I forget. I just canceled the meetings for that day. That's the only, those are the only ones I canceled were for the day of ChaosCon. Okay. Well, maybe we could do it like kind of async, but Kevin, like, could you maybe like do the roughest framework of a model as you would see it coming from this? Like, it doesn't have to even follow the template really. You know what I mean? Just like, what would be the metrics that are in it? Just to and get- you, you even see the, the description says that if data is agnostic to us, churn, but I don't think that statement is correct. What because statement? Fundament, but fundamentally, if data is churn, it's, it's built on that on, on churn. So I don't see how it is agnostic from churn. That statement it says it's agnostic towards churn. Yes, I'm uh, I think they're treating not judging churn. Yeah, I think they're they're treating churn as a bad thing. Well, they're saying it's neither good nor bad. Yeah. They're just saying it's a thing. So churn would be how many times a particular file gets. I mean, I, I don't know how churn is conceptualized here. So, Kevin, would you be able to at least kind of sketch out a model that could be diff delta? Uh, yes. Like super simply, because then we'd have the three things on the table, which would be this as a metric. The other one is a metric, like code lines changes, or code lines changed. And then this as a model, it might be helpful to see all three of them okay. against each other. Yeah, and I, I don't think I don't think any of us have read uh, lines of code changed either or any of the just, any of the lines yeah, of codes I, metrics in a while. So, I just read it. Oh, just now? Okay. I well, just I was, I was, put a link in the chat and read it. It's yeah. very bare bones compared to this. A lot of those early evolution metrics are really bare bones. <laughs> well, that I would mm -hmm. I would say that's good though. Oh yeah. Right? I, so that, I mean that that metric is it's supposed to measure like like a, a specific thing. So when we start yeah. when we start adding multiple things to it to measure, they uh, uh, I think we we can. We can confound it. So, also, Matt, do you know why they use the name Diff Delta? Because that name is really misleading, as we discussed earlier. No, based on the description, I don't know. Where does this metric think... come from? So there was an individual who had brought it up in Slack, and I okay. recommended that, just in terms of helping us think about it, yeah. they put it in a metric template, which they took the time to do. Mm -hmm. And so here it is. So that was really the only discussion. I mean, the, so far. the other thing we could do is um, just accept it as is um, and refer to the existing metrics that get at the very basic information that underlies this. So we could nominally change the language and refer to code changes lines and talk about how this is elaborating on that further. And if Kevin thinks it's a metric model, I am cool with that as well, because I can see that argument.
So I, I kind of feel like they're they're leaning heavy on the implementation. The implementation part is kind of what they want. That's kind of what we get these days. <laughs> yeah. So which which also makes it a, a good fit for the for as a model. But is so, it really yeah. a model? I mean, this this to me looks like uh, relatively. Uh, so I I think that what this metric should be is a relatively simple. Um, you're talking about the the um, basically just the you know the the diff between the two files. Um, I think that they've made it a little bit more complicated. Like I think that they've so the part that you've just highlighted, we would normally have that in the filters section of a regular metric, right? We'd be, um, you know, you'd find something relatively simple. You talk about all the different ways to filter it. But if this, if this really is just like the, the, the diff, that that doesn't feel to me like a model. It feels to me like a metric. I think the way that they talked about it here maybe complicates it more than it should be. I don't know what other people. Think. I agree with with Don. I agree with you, Don. I'm trying to find the conversation in Slack. Yeah. It was not much. Yeah, I just searched and I didn't find anything in the search. Okay. Maybe look at the history of the document to find the name. Hmm. Good idea. <laughs> uh, so I'm 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 not opposed to I mean the, the simplest the simplest route is is often the easiest route. So maybe the, the simplest route is to edit our existing metric and add files as a uh, uh, as a filter, like Don said, and uh, see if there's anything else from this metric that could be uh, moved into the uh, which which metric are we talking? The lines of code. Lines code changed. Lines code lines lines of code changed. It. Okay, I can go get it. I mean that that's probably the that's probably the easiest path. So maybe we maybe do that and see if uh, see what that looks like, and and then from there we could determine if we want to take it further. Uh, I would say I I do still think that the. Uh, the files and directories is probably a se second metric, but second uh, second metrics can be filters as well. So, Kevin, I just put the other one in the chat. So the the number of the number of lines of code and the number of files, and they kind of inform different things. So it's not measuring the same thing. Okay, well, let me, I'll take that route. Let me see, because I just was taking a look at the other metric, the one I just put in the chat. Let me see what, I'm holding these two up with each other in the light. How, you know, what could go from one to the other? You know, how this might inform. Yeah, you, I'm assuming that markdown file is the same metric as the one on the website that I just posted as well. Yep, should be. They might be a little bit different just because I was like removing the, or like making changes to the privacy statement. You know what I mean? So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just some editorial changes, but yeah, content-wise, nothing changed. Okay. Oh, well, there's another. We want to. We want to put an AI on. <laughs> yeah, you can add that to me, Kevin. Okay. I don't know whose screen we're looking at, but. Okay. Okay. And then the uh, the last thing was the metrics audit progress. Okay. Yep. 
So I just wanted to kind of keep people posted. The process is changing just a little bit here and there as I go through it. So it's real time process change as I go through the process. Um, so the spreadsheet is, um, I'm just really thankful we have the spreadsheet. It is so incredibly helpful in terms of monitoring metrics and kind of auditing the metrics. Um, so there has been, I think through this process, just kind of ensuring that the spreadsheet is up to date with the metrics that have been released on the website. And that should be all good now. Um, Don, this is kind of for you. So I had just moved that privacy statement down to the bottom of all of the common metrics. We're actually gonna remove it because we can do a WordPress. <laughs> so there's gonna be a whole yeah. other set of TRs. We're actually gonna do a WordPress module that will allow every metric to just have that same module at the end okay. so we can we it'll centralize the privacy statement for everybody see what i'm saying we'll just have the yeah. statement as a markdown file in like the community repo or something like that and kevin and elizabeth were talking that getting it as a module just at the end of every metric shouldn't be too much too much work so then we just have it in one place if we have any changes to it it'll it'll really help a lot um, yeah, that's yeah, really that's, just a really good idea. Yeah, so look for that. I'll, I mean, I'll just merge a whole nother wave of change <laughs> from you, I guess. I mean, I can merge my own if you're all okay with it. If all I'm doing is removing that statement, I can just do the PR and merge. I know that's... Yeah. Well, yeah, that's GitHub fair. has a very mocking badge if you do that. Well, it's I the don't... YOLO badge. It's it's the yellow oh. badge. You only live once. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you created and merged your own pull request. You're not supposed to do that. You only live yeah. once. You can only get that I badge have the once, though. Badge, but yeah, yeah, me too. Maybe I want that badge. Yeah. Oh no, <laughs> you can say that you've. Earned, it says how many. It says like you've earned it. Like I, my stats are pretty gross. Probably that's pretty funny. Um, we're also. The one of the proposals is to remove the not data, the date of last review. So it, at the bottom of every metric, we had um, a very random assortment of metrics that carried a date of last review. It was like 10% or as I go through, it's even less than 10%. And so what we were going to add was um, I can go track it down, but a statement that would also be in a module. Let me let me give me a second. I'll go get that statement. Um, It would also just be included at the bottom of every metric, as well as on the chaos community metric page, just talking about how we do reviews. And so, so there will be no date on it. No date on it. Hold on a second. Let me just show you. But we are adding a link to the markdown file, right? To to the metrics too. So oh, we, the... oh yeah, that's a good I we, I don't recall. Did we have that conversation? Yes. Yeah, because yeah. every time somebody wants to edit a metric, oh, then yeah. you have to dig through the repository to figure out where that metric is. I will. So we talked about adding a link to the um, to the markdown file, and I think if we have a link to the markdown file, you can always click on the markdown file and see what you know when it was last edited and what the edits were. Well, if you have a link to the markdown file, somebody can actually write a scanner to go through the published metrics and reconcile them with the markdown file, and make sure identify changes that have occurred. So the, in addition to idea. that, yes, yeah, so let's, um, I can do that to add link to the markdown. I, and I have all that in the spreadsheet. Uh, are we wanting to add the, the stable URL as well with the number? Um, yeah, so we can add that as well. Okay, that should help. So then, I mean, do you think if we add a link to the markdown, see that statement right there that says we continually review all metrics for content clarity and structure, like would we just not need that? Because that was, the proposal was to put that statement also at the end of every metric, you know, in addition to that privacy statement. And then I think anything that, anything that would go at the end of every metric, we should use the WordPress plugin for. <laughs> yeah, the question is, do we even want to include that that text? We continually review all metrics for content clarity and structure. All metrics are reviewed at least once every two years. 
Are they though? When we talked yesterday in DEI, um, we did. This is what we're proposing. And actually, I think I think the answer is yes. It can be yes. Because even just like what I'm doing right now by going through them and even just taking a look at the privacy statement, to me, that's a, a structural edit, not necessarily a content edit. But maybe I should say or structure, not and structure <laughs> on that line. Um, I'm wondering, is it, uh, so by us adding a link to the markdown, we are, we're going to have to add that to the markdown file so that it gets pulled into the, the website. Yeah. Um, is, is that also something that's maybe better done in WordPress because WordPress pulls, um, I mean, it pulls everything from the markdown file into, into WordPress. So does it know that link and could we add it? Could we do something dynamic within WordPress to add the link to the markdown file that it's pulled things from? That way we don't have to do it manually for every single one. And it would have the benefit of, because we're going to forget to do this for new metrics, guaranteed in some of the uh, working groups. Is there an automated way that we could do it that would make it easier? Yeah. I mean, there's always an automation that we can build to edit markdown. Well, but if the automation that we build is going to take us a year to build, then let's not bother. Let's right. just add it manually. I no, wonder yeah. if Kevin knows of like a, a way to do this or if Elizabeth knows of a way to do this. Uh, so so you're you're saying uh, basically, so what would that what would that link look like to you? Would it be like click on the document and it takes you to GitHub or a button that would exist? I think just a link. So the yeah. sentence would be, if you would like to offer suggestions or comments on this metric, you can do so here. And then it would link to the GitHub, um, the GitHub markdown file, which we have in that GitHub plugin, Kevin, but I don't know how to extract right. that again. Yeah. So that would be, so it's probably a, we can add, we could add a module to the template uh, and and with that, uh, with that code or that button or that link in it, uh, and then when we create a metric, that that module would automatically be created along with the uh, uh, privacy. What's that? The privacy statement. Yeah. So then we would just have to go in and edit that module so that the link was uh, pointing to the appropriate place. Uh, so the when you when you when you would create a metric you would have to add that you have to you have to add that link or that address to the github module and then we would add it to the link module uh and then you would add keywords you would add context words and you would add the name of the metric uh and theoretically that those if you do all of those tasks you've added a you've added a metric all right so the the list isn't that long you can you can you could it's it takes about five minutes to publish a metric that way maybe less uh so i, I it's not a as long as it's part of the template i don't think that's an issue so yes we could we could we could make that fairly easy to do i think so you would suggest I do add the template or add the like link to link to your own self, basically <laughs> link to the markdown. Yeah, that, that would be a separate module. So it would be one it would be one module that would have some text in it that says something to the effect of, uh, you know, uh, if you want to edit this metric or recommend changes, mm -hmm. here's the link to GitHub. So it would be it would be a separate module to the uh, uh the disclaimer one that you were talking about prior okay so a, met a metrics template page would have three modules on it it would have the github module it have have that disclaimer module and then it would have the uh the link module uh we wouldn't have we wouldn't have to edit the uh disclaimer module that would just always exist the two places the two modules we would have to edit would be the github module which is the actual metric and then okay. we'd have to add that link to the uh, the link module as well. Okay. Okay. Um, but it can be added to the template so that uh, basically it would create a list of 
when it's added to the template, we, we have a list of there are like five or six things we have to do when we when we publish a metric and oh, that's just template. a matter of I see what's that. Oh. That no, template. no, the actual, we could add it to the actual temp word, it would be a WordPress template of what a metric looks like, so that module would automatically populate when we create a new metric. Okay. Could you, okay, I didn't 100% follow every step, but <laughs> I believe I you. did. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> as long as there's some, there's, at least there's two people that understand it. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I fo I actually followed it too. Could, could um, could maybe we try this on a metric? Because uh, we want to we want to try it anyway with the the privacy statement. Yeah, like adding that as a module, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So just for a that's a smart uh, way to start. We'd yeah. also talked about adding those links to the community handbook pages as well. What links? Like if you want to suggest changes, here's where you oh, do that. I gotcha. gotcha. So, so I I think we should consider that as well. Uh, but that's for I think there's a there's another group that's going to be looking at that. So, yeah. yeah, that's a good idea though. We shouldn't forget that, Kevin. Good idea. <laughs> okay. Um, just kind of those last two points. I'm just kind of going through. The metrics for readability, like I found a few typos. Sometimes I find some um, markup in there. You know what I mean? Just to remove that kind of stuff. So I am doing edits to some of the metrics, but with no content change edits, they're really just structural edits to it. Um, and then once the, kind of this is done, I think we can start adding the keywords and context tags because those there aren't many that include that right now on the website, but there is still a little bit of work that needs to be done in the spreadsheet. Like for example, risk, all the keywords right now in risk or just say risk. Yeah, I had uh, I, I had brought this up. Uh, it's on the risk agenda every week, but there's okay. been a lot of risk related <laughs> news. And so we get, the group is easily sidetracked if, if you can conceptualize who the group is. Yes, I can. Um, so, okay. Um, well, <laughs> nonetheless, it needs to be done. <laughs> I will take that as an action item before our next meeting. Okay. I will, I will get the risk keywords added. We have a meeting today and uh, okay. maybe I can recruit a couple oh. other people to take That's on that like, work. Asynchronous yeah, 10 minutes well. usually gets that done, you know? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's been on the agenda. So yeah. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll um, take that on for um, the next time that this group meets. Thank you, Sean. So and Elizabeth and I are just kind of doing this work. So just suffice it to say, we're really trying to align the spreadsheet with the released metrics and the keywords. Like we're trying to get all of this like lined up. There was some, they were starting to deviate just a little bit, but we we're spending quite a bit of time just to kind of clean that up. So, and it's going well. And like I said, we're learning as- Should, we... should I um, add the risk? Should I add the keywords? Should I add the keywords only to the spreadsheet or should I just go ahead and put them on the website as well? No, just at this point, just add them to the spreadsheet. That would be most helpful. Okay. Yep. And then, cause that'll be the next round. And then Elizabeth and I will just go through like kind of metric by metric again, adding keywords and context tags. So having them in the spreadsheet is the most helpful thing right now. Cool. And you're, you're talking about adding keywords and context tags to oh. the metric markdown file. <clears throat> yeah. So first I, okay. first we just want them in the spreadsheet. I'll okay. put them in there and then in kind of a second phase we'll, we'll start adding them to the, to the markdown files. Okay. And I will, uh, uh, as soon as they're in the spreadsheet, I can also add them to okay. WordPress, uh, which is a, okay. a separate thing. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. That's the update on kind of getting all this, these audited. This really has nothing to do with content. It just has to do with getting everything together and organized. Okay, I, I think we're out of time. Yeah. Sorry, I'm late. It wasn't that an album. A little bit. Only four, only four minutes late, Kevin. Three. Thanks, Fox. That's three. A very productive meeting. Thank you all. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Uh, are, are we meet? So, did we decide? Are we meeting in two weeks, or yes. is it four weeks? 
I think we decided we are, but I don't remember. Yeah. Two weeks, yes. This meeting, yeah, we are. Okay. Yeah, I won't I won't be there because I'll be at OSSNA. Okay. But sounds good. Okay. Okay. Right. Bye. Bye everybody. Bye.